So on today's video, I'm gonna be upgrading and replacing the factory turbocharger on a PX Ford Ranger. The turbocharger that I'm gonna be using is just the eBay spec billet wheel one. So in here, the compressor wheel is actually billet aluminum. So it's meant to flow a little bit better than factory. Um, this is just the eBay spec one. I picked it up pretty cheap, so nothing fancy about it, but the only difference is it has got the aluminum billet wheel. So I'm gonna be seeing if this makes a difference over the factory one. The factory one that I've got in there at the moment, uh, when it hits boost, it peaks at about 22, 23 pounds, and then it tapers back to sort of 15 pounds when you get closer to red line. So we'll see if this one flows any better. Um, and at the same time, I'm gonna be showing you how to replace the turbo if you wanna replace it for some reason, or if your turbo blows, I'm gonna be going through the process and the steps associated with that. At the same time, I'm gonna be upgrading the hot side of my intercooler piping, which is just replacing it with this pipe. A couple of silicon couplers there. It's good to do this at the same time because you've got to remove this anyway to remove the turbo. The only thing that you really need for this is just a gasket kit. So this is just a eBay one. Again, I think I paid about $20 for it. Um, it's only got one copper washer. You really need two of them. In the kit, for some reason, it only comes with one. Um, I'm going to be probably reusing my factory exhaust pipe gasket, well, this one here, or I might, I don't know yet, I might refit this one, just depends on how I'm feeling, um, but you'll definitely need the return gasket, which is that one there, because that's just a paper one, so you definitely gotta replace it. So when it comes to removing the actual turbo, I've already done a video that covers a lot of this stuff already, so I'm gonna throw the link up in the top right-hand corner, so just watch the first 15 minutes of that. Basically covers how to remove the airbox, how to remove this intake pipe, a couple other little bits and pieces here to get to the actual turbo. I'm gonna jump back into the video once I have all this sort of, you know, associated stuff removed and just get to the nitty gritty of the actual removal of the turbo itself with the, you know, oil feed line, oil return line, exhaust and that because that's the sort of more technical stuff rather than this stuff which is pretty easy to remove. Okay, so a couple of minutes later, as you can see, Turbo is right there. I've removed the airbox, a couple other bits and pieces just to make a bit of room. I disconnected this um, overflow bottle pipe and just push it to the side, as well as this um, uh, catch can pipe or whatever it's called. I don't run a catch can, but anyway, this goes back into the intake. So this is the stuff here that I've removed. This sits at the front of the turbo. That's your uh, intake pipe from the airbox to the turbo, and that's your airbox there. Once again, I've covered all this in another video, that's why I haven't gone into too much detail. All right, so I thought I'd just point out how to get the uh, plug, electrical plug off the actuator, because this might be one of the more difficult sort of things to do when you're down here, but it's really just straightforward. All you do is with your flathead screwdriver, just push the back of it there. Um, there's, there's one on each side, so I usually just push this one down with the screwdriver and try and push the other one down just with your hand to, to release the tension off it. And then essentially you just come in through here with a flat head and just push it back like that. And as you can see, it's come straight off. So next up, I'm just gonna dive into the driver's side wheel arch and remove a couple of these clips here to remove this rubber flap, just to give us a bit more access from in here. So with removing the wheel arch, I just use one of these picks to remove it. I just find that mine are pretty worn out. So I just kind of like get in there with the pick and just essentially just pull them back. It's a little bit fiddly, but there we go. And that's how they come out like that. So I've just pulled that flat back. And as you can see down here, we've now got access to, well, that's the dump pipe there, but we've sort of got access to the back of the dump pipe as well as the uh, oil drain, which is right there. So I'll get more into that a bit later on, but what we're gonna focus on next is there's an eight mil bolt for the intercooler pipe. There it is, eight mil intercooler pipe bolt, right next to that hose. So you gotta undo that before you do anything. I just thought I'd mention, I had to use a double extension just to reach that bolt because the chassis rail was in the way. So once you got that bolt out, there's just another hose clamp to undo here for the intercooler pipe, and another one just at your intercooler, which is this one here. So I was struggling a little bit with the intercooler pipe, and what I've done, I've um, just 
unbolted this power steering reservoir, pushed it to the side, and hopefully now that intercooler pipe should come straight out. So just a quick note, I did have to separate the hot side intercooler pipe into three pieces. So essentially that was up there like that. And then this other one was up there like that. That's the only way I could get it out, otherwise it was really sort of stuck in there. And this is the bolt that holds it in from underneath, which is that one right there. So with your dump pipe, um, the factory bolts are 17. So you got three of them. Um, hopefully I can, yeah, you got one there, one sort of up around the back, and then if you come underneath, this one's probably going to be the hardest one to get to, which is that one there, which you can get from underneath the, from the wheel arch, so it's really not too difficult to do. So the dump pipe now is off, it's just sort of sitting there loose. Next one I'm going to tackle is going to be the oil feed line, which is this one here. I think that's just, looks like a 10 mil. So as I climb underneath the car, I have now access to the oil drain, which is right there in the middle of the camera. So that's just two 8mm bolts and pretty easy to get to. And essentially we'll be pretty much ready to start unbolting the turbo. So turbo drain is all loose and undone. So next up what I'm going to be doing is just undoing the turbo. And essentially for the turbo, there's three bolts, you've got one there. There it is, hopefully you can see that one there. Two 13 mils from the bottom of the car to access the removal of the turbo. Pretty easy to get to. So once you've pulled those two off and the one from the top, you can pretty much remove the turbo. So I just tried undoing the uh, bottom bolts for the turbo and they seem to be rusted on. I sprayed them with a bit of CRC, but unfortunately they don't seem like they want to come off. So what I find that I'm probably gonna have to do here is undo my alternator, push that out of the way and take my turbo off with the actual exhaust manifold. So it's a bit more work doing it this way, but this car's got, you know, over 350,000 kilometers on it. And essentially the bolts are rusted on. So I should have technically probably sprayed them with CRC overnight and let them sit, but I was in a bit of a hurry to do it. So what I'm gonna have to do now is unbolt this alternator. It looks like it's pretty straightforward to do. Push it to the side, undo the all the exhaust manifold bolts and pull the turbo off with the exhaust manifold. So I would highly advise spraying your bolts with uh, CRC before trying to pull them off and probably let them sit overnight as well. It'll save you having to do it this way. All right. So if you are doing it this way, there is one 10 mil bolt up the top for the dipstick tube, which sits like that. And then it just pretty much just strides, slides straight out. So the exhaust manifold bolts came out relatively easy wasn't too much drama with them or anything like that. And here we have both the turbos sitting side by side. As you can see, the um, main difference is just the, um, the compressor wheel, which is a billet one there, and the factory one, which you can see in here, 
which is um, a fair bit different. Um, this one has seen a lot of kilometers, so it's still, it was still working fine and the shaft plate isn't too bad. Um, but as you can see by that to, uh, compressor wheel, it's um, pretty well worn. So one thing that I did forget to mention on camera, when I did pull this manifold off, I had to do the three EGR bolts at the back as well. So I didn't film those, they were just a bit too hard to film, there's not much room up there. Um, but you will have to take them off if you're pulling the exhaust manifold off with the turbo. And I'll show you the reason why I had to do it this way, um, is because this here, as you can see, completely stripped on me when I was trying to undo it. And I even tried everything that I could to get it undone and I couldn't. Um, it was basically like it was just fused on there, so not too much I could have done about that, except pull the whole exhaust manifold off with the turbo. Don't forget to put this in the solution to all your Ranger problems. Turbo is now all bolted in and the exhaust manifold is all done up tight as well as the EGR cooler. So next up I'm going to climb underneath and hook up the oil drain pipe which is just two 8mm bolts and a new gasket. I won't be able to film it, there's just not enough room under there to film but it's pretty straightforward. So I finally got the return pipe on for the oil feed and it was a bit of stuffing around, I'll show you why. Um, on this turbo here. When I put the gasket on, I found it wasn't seated properly. I managed to get one screw in and then I couldn't get the other side to go on. So what I did is I got this pick and I stuck it in there and just wriggled it around a bit just to align the gasket because I only had one side in. And it seemed to do the trick and the other bolt went through. So before I put the uh, oil feed on, I'm just gonna prime it with a little bit of oil because it has been sitting around for a while. So just get a tiny bit of oil in there. So it's got something in there when the car starts up. Now with the oil feed, I'm gonna to have to reuse one of the gaskets, which is this one here, because the kit that I bought only had one copper washer in it. So I'm gonna put this one probably just on the top and this one, the better one in the middle. Hopefully it'll hold, if not, I'll have to get another copper gasket washer, whatever it's called. So dump pipe is now fully on. Next up, I've got the intercooler piping that I'm gonna be putting on, which is the aftermarket ones. Luckily, I don't have to put the factory ones back on because they're a bit of a nightmare to get back on. So this should be pretty straightforward. Got the aftermarket intercooler pipe in and pretty much all that's left now is just the alternator and a couple other bits and pieces like the airbox. And we're all done and ready for a test drive. And just like that, everything is back together again. Pretty much ready to start it up and um, just to check for any leaks or anything like that, any oil leaks and whatever might be, and just see how it runs. And most of all, take it for a test drive.
So just a quick recap on what my thoughts are in regards to the Billet Turbo. I did find that the Billet Turbo and the Factory Turbo both were very similar in performance. The Billet Turbo did have a much better sound to it when spooling up and also found that the Billet Turbo felt like it held boost in the mid-range for a lot longer. But all in all, um, they were very similar in performance. I would only advise that are going to the Billet Turbo if you've got to replace the Turbo. Otherwise, you know, if you're going to go stock Turbo, just go stock Turbo. There isn't that much sort of performance increase in regards to both of them. Um, however, if you are going to fit it, I do advise um, spraying WD-40 on all the bolts before you remove them. It's just going to save you a lot more work. As you can see, I had to do in that video by removing the exhaust manifold. Till next time, catch you guys on the next video.